Hey friends, welcome back to another weekly energy video on YouTube. Um, I'm talking about the energy, astrological energy of the week ahead. And it's April 24th through the 30th, the final week in April. To recap April really quick, um, we moved into Taurus season from Aries. We've just experienced an eclipse, um, new moon eclipse. Um, springtime is one of the eclipse seasons and then fall is the other eclipse season. So we're within now the portal of this eclipse. I don't know how it has been like for you all, but I will share just something about my experience. I felt that the whole week leading up to the new moon was just like I had no energy, no, oh, I couldn't even like really get my feet under me. I was avoiding doing any sort of readings or now my light is doing weird stuff. Do you remember when it used to do that at the very beginning when I was making videos? Okay. I hope it's all right now. Yeah, I just had no energy during that whole first week and I I still don't know why that was. I was maybe thinking like, oh, I should um, look after how I'm eating, look after how I'm exercising and just, you know, it could be one of so many different things when you find yourself in that situation. Um, and I just felt the need to sort of get grounded. I think we talked about that one of these weeks, there was a message of like, let's get, let's get grounded. So now we're in Taurus season and it's ever more present. Um, how things like comfort and security are showing up. Um, Taurus also rules, I mean, it rules the second house, which is also finances, um, the home. Was it the home? Yeah, I mean, if the, because it's about value and beauty and I feel like the home is a big part of that. So is comfort. Let's get into it. Uh, Monday, the sun is conjunct with North Node. That's fated encounters, understanding your mission more, having important conversations. So also this Mercury aspect with Mars, it's in a sextile. This is cutting through Mercury retrograde so that we can find and strengthen our communication skills. And this is what's giving us the ability to move forward with anything that we've been hesitant about, whether it's a project or having a conversation with somebody. I feel like this week it's finally coming through. Um, moon is in Cancer, moving to Leo and ending on Virgo. So we're having a Virgo moon weekend. Cancer is that comfort, right? That ooey gooey spot. Leo is that back to fire, is that boldness, assertiveness, um, expressiveness. Mm, okay, there's, uh, so Leo marks the first quarter, right? After the new moon, we have a first quarter moon. This is about accepting feedback and using it for improvement. We're gaining momentum and it's about exacting our effort. So this is interesting to me because it's almost like there's a missing piece. Like if I were to do a tarot spread right now, I feel like the, the Ace of Swords would come out and we would maybe get the high priestess or just something about wisdom or knowledge wanting to be employed. And where is that? Where is that? Okay. We are supported to find strength in our wounds, the points of, uh, wounds as points of potential versus pain. So it's almost like we're just fed up with something and realizing that it's something that we need to work with instead of uh, working around. Mars in transit with Uranus, that's unusual interest, new technology, novel techniques, extreme ideas. And finally landing on Mercury square Lilith, avoid distractions through desire. Remember that the eclipses sort of activate sexual energies, um, sensual energies. Um, yeah, with that eclipse. So, um, oh, Another Mercury transit with Lilith this week is telling us to avoid distractions through desire. Um, this makes me think 
about impulsiveness or sort of not thinking. We remember the theme for a big theme for this month has been connecting with others in an intellectual, intimate manner. So our you know intellect is the swords again, and the swords are also communication. It's air sign. It's Mercury again. So we are being asked to you know just because Mercury is retrograde, we don't just like cut ourselves off from the world. Although I will say that that is how all of last week felt for me. I don't know how it was for you. I was just sort of like, you know, I got to get myself grounded. So I'm not, I'm, I'm spending time here in the lower chakras than I am like doing channeling or psychic readings or cards or, you know, anything else. It is saying strengthen your head to heart connection Validating emotions allows greater motivation. Take responsibility for your actions and convey your message without suppressing your beliefs. Lilith is the astral body representing that which is suppressed, um, that which is repressed. Mercury wants us to do a little bit of outreach on behalf of those parts of ourselves. Uranus is coming in to say, here's a new idea. Here's what you can work with. Here's, um, here's maybe a way you haven't thought about this before. And I think it is coming down to that using, finding strength in our wounds as points of potential versus pain. Um, if there is new information coming in, I feel like it's, um, well, this doesn't have to be true, but is it coming from somebody else or is it coming from within you? I guess that's what I wanted to know. And I guess this is where I would miss the cards having doing the tarot reading with, with this video because I would, ask a, I, w I would ask a question or maybe it would, it would just be revealed in the spread of where is it coming from, this new information. It could be either way. It could, like, you might be meeting somebody new or somebody that you know. In, in either case, it's a faded encounter. Uh, Monday night. Monday night is the exactitude of that energy, but it could happen anytime because waves, right? They don't hit us all at the same time, and sometimes they do, and they affect us all differently anyway. So Monday night is the exactitude of that transit of faded encounters. Pay attention to who you're around this week um, and pay attention to anything that feels special and whether it's a you know good or a bad feeling I mean feelings are feelings don't just look at the good ones look at the bad ones also the icky feelings because Lilith is here um, yeah and even though Mars is still in cancer it's borrowing energy from Aries in its transit with Chiron this is, this is the part where we are supported to find strength. Mm -hmm. And it's a Virgo moon weekend. So Virgo is the sign of the healer health, service, and assessment. So think about what you can do over the weekend to work with the moon. Um, try an alternative method of healing. You know, you could try meditation, try Reiki, go to a sound bath, do something nice for yourself that feels progressive and aimed towards healing. Or maybe you wanna help somebody this weekend is a sign of service. So how can you do what you do in a way that helps those around you? And it's the sign of the healer. So when I think of healer, I think of everybody as a healer, like be your own healer. And for that, we need to understand what it is that we need in any given moment and what it is we're able to give ourselves based on what it is that we need. Because it does say here, take responsibility for your actions. And validating emotions allows greater motivation. 
not saying it doesn't necessarily feel like seek validation for your emotions, but validate your own feelings and take responsibility for your actions. And any conversations around this um, coming from this place or wanting to center um, communication around either new ways of communicating or um, new ways that you want to interact with the world or want to be interacted with, anything like that, feel is coming to the forefront. And that's why the quarter moon in Leo says, accept feedback and use it for improvement. This, I mean, this does feel like some of the things, things and themes of this whole month, but I think that that is uh, good and, and intentional. Like, I'm doing these, realizing that weekly energy is a saga, and it's, Reminds me of those like really fun paintings that people make where they use way too much paint. And di every different color is like a transit of that week. Well, things hit the canvas at different times, but then also you're having people like move it around. So th different paints can come on top of other paints as it gets moved around. So this is how the energy works. I'm telling you when the transits are occurring and what they mean and how they can affect one another, but how it will occur in my life and your life and in the collective um, will be completely unique in its own. So um, I will keep my own notes. I hope you do too. And if it resonates with you, uh, definitely leave a comment or message me because I'd love to hear about how these themes are, how you're connecting with these themes. Uh, week to week. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you on the next video.